Section 6.9, Electron Configurations and the Periodic Table. The periodic table is by far the greatest cheat sheet you have ever seen when it comes to chemistry. Everything is there. And it's almost like when you have a periodic table, it's right in front of you. So if you know that the periodic table is arranged by atomic number, and the atomic number is increasing by one each time, and each one of those elements is neutral, that means that each one is that you, that you have one new electron each block. That means number one, followed by number two, followed number by number three, are arranging themselves according to the lowest energy level. They're, they're going in the cheapest possible room that they can go into. And so it's going to start in 1s. So hydrogen will go into the 1s. Helium fills that up. And so there's 2s, and that whole row is full. That's why you put the, the, the 1s, you split the 1s. You put, you put hydrogen on the very left, but you put that helium all the way to the right because it's, it's like a noble gas. It, it's full. That whole shell is full. Even though there's one orbital in it, it's full, and helium acts like all the other noble gases that have a full subshell. Once you get to lithium and, and beryllium, you're now in the two S's again. And so everything in the first two columns will be the S's. So you have the first column is S1, the second column is S2. So, the, so anything on the left side of the periodic table, the first two columns of the periodic table are your S's. Okay. Now going over to the right, anything in the last six columns are your P's. Six, uh, P6 would be a noble gas configuration. So you would start with boron in group uh, in row two, boron and go all the way across to neon. So that would be your P's. And so P would be P1, the first column, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. When you have S's and P's, here's S's and P's, this makes up the valence electrons. The valence electrons are your outer shell electrons, and it determines chemistry. It's your outer shell electrons that share to make bonds. It's your outer shell electrons that steal to make ions. So the chemistry involved, most of the chemistry involved, relates to the valence electrons, which is your S's and your P's. Okay, so once you get to 4s, your interest it's interesting because we filled 3p, but we don't fill 3d yet. You would think that you would fill all the 3s before you would go to the 4s, but it happens to be that 4s has a lower energy than 3d. So you're going to after you finished after you finish 3p, which 3p6, you go to 4s1. 4s2, and once that 4s is filled, the very next possibility is 3d. So that that describes what when we looked at this molecular um, orbital diagram, we had the 1s, then the next cheapest room was the 2s, then the next cheapest room, there were three of the same price, which were the, the 2p, then you had the, the 3s, then the 3p, And then you would imagine the next one would be 3D, but it isn't. The next one is 4S. Then you have your five rooms of the 3D. Once you get through 3D, then you go into the, into the 4P. So this one is just very close. So you, the energies are close. And because the energies are close, it just happens that the 4F fills before the 3D. But it doesn't matter. You look at the periodic table, and you look that the next one has to be 4s because it's in the s columns, and then the d's are in this middle, the, this, these transition metals. That's the d. So these are the d subshells. So you have the s's in the first column, the p's in the last six columns, and then the 10 in between are called d's. 
And so you're going to fill the 4S and then you're going to fill the 3D. Now the interesting weird thing is that that is in the fourth row. So you're not going to get to the 4D until you the fifth row. You're not going to get to the 5D until the sixth row. That means all the Ds are off by one. Because if you remember, group one had one subshell, the S. Uh, the second, the second uh, shell had two subshells, the S and the P. The third shell had three subshells, the S, P, and the D, but it doesn't fill until the fourth row. So it's an inside group of electrons. That's why the S's and the P's are outside valence electrons. So these D's are inside, uh, being kind of filed away on the inside of the shells. The very last shells, the veil, like the wedding veil, is on the outside. Okay, The F's start 4F, this is 4F, but you don't see 4F until after 6S. So the 6S fills, then the 4Fs start to fill. So it's, it's a little bizarre, but you can look at these and see where they are at all points. Now for a little bit of weirdness. If you were to have a mm, half shell of Ds, if the, it would be energetically better. See, if you see that there's 10 here, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? There's an energy benefit to having a half of a D shell full. There's also an energy benefit to have a whole D subshell full. So when you get up to number four and number nine, sometimes they will steal the electron from 4S2 and, and borrow so that they can fill that subshell or half fill it. So, for instance, often chromium will steal the 4S2 electron and stick it in the manganese slot so that it can pretend that it's half full, even though that it's not. It's still lacking one. Manganese would have 4S2 plus half of the D. Copper is the same way. Uh, copper only has 9, so it would be 4S1, 4S2, 3D9, but most of the time, copper will steal that 4s2 electron, stick it where zinc belongs, so that copper can pretend that it has a full five uh, or three D. It's just an energy problem, and it's no big deal, and nobody's going to make you memorize it. It's just that some of these electron configurations go a little bit weird in the Ds, and a couple in the Fs. And what it is is they're halfway filled or they're fully filled, almost fully filled. And so in order to get that 9 to a 10, they take the 4S2 and they steal it and they put it over where the zinc goes in order to be more stable. It's a stability factor. So here is the here is the a configuration of copper. Copper is a 9, and so it steals uh, calciums in order to make it zinc. It's just, just, a, it's just a, it's an energy thing. You're going to see some of these with Fs too. You can look at them and see, oh, there's a couple of these that kind of don't fit the, fit the bill. But what's happening is that the Ds and Fs are very, very close in energy. And so uh, before one is full, sometimes they'll steal and make another one um, more of a benefit to them energetically. All it is is energy. So don't worry about this at all.